Good afternoon and welcome to Wholesome Roots. I was asked to participate in a collaboration. This is a collaboration started by Life Goes North and it is in support of Life on Beagle Road. This collaboration is about homesteaders taking a stand. Taking a stand to fight the bureaucracies of our government and some of the more let's say outdated laws I want to say idiotic but you know I'm trying to be nice we live in a country that's supposed to be the home of the free where you're supposed to be able to have freedom to do things that you want to do to live the life that you want to live and make your own choices but something as simple as having goats in your property can cause some major disruptions if your township has outdated zoning laws against it. Kenny and Courtney over at Life on Beagle Road have been hit hard. They went through all of the proper channels to make sure that they were able to have goats and chickens on their property before they had got these animals. Apparently, a zoning officer has taken a personal interest in their case and has decided to attack them through some very inappropriate means. You see, the zoning laws state that you have to have pasture for your large livestock. Well, they have tons of space for these animals. They have more than enough room and they meet the acreage requirements for the zoning. What is being nitpicked here is the fact that a lot of their acreage is in the woods, which if you know anything about goats, you will know that goats prefer forest and the food that grows in the forest. They thrive in that environment. Goats don't eat grass. Goats will eat grass if forced to, but that's not supposed to be their entire supplement. Goats are supposed to be browsers. They are not grazers of grass. So to, for this officer to put this fine magnifying glass on this family who's done nothing wrong, has kept immaculate conditions for their animals, and has just decided to attack them, it's really, really upsetting and frustrating. But they are not giving up. They are fighting it. They have already been to one township meeting and now they're waiting for the next one. They have not been told no, but they have not been told yes. Even if they get this pardoned, they're still going to have to pay huge sums of money in order to get it so that they can keep their animals. This isn't right. We live in the United States of America. We're supposed to have the freedom to homestead, to have our animals. As, I mean, I can understand living in a small community with close neighbors and only having a tiny property that doesn't support an animal. That's one thing. They have the space. They don't have any issues with their neighbors. Nobody reported them. This was the zoning officer making a personal vendetta against them. And I think that's the part that bothers me the most is what is wrong with this picture? How can one person force somebody to give up their animals? So we have a question for you. Have you ever had an issue come up with your local government? If yes, what was the issue? What was the outcome? Think of a way you plan to fight to change this so others or you can have your opportunities. So have you ever had an issue come up with your local government? If your answer is no, are you aware of how your township area limits homesteaders? Find a way to change it and tell us about it. And then what can we do to keep the homesteaders movement alive and not allow these towns to do these things? The only instances I have ever experienced have been minor and they didn't directly impact me as much as it did my fellow neighbors. There were a couple of things that I fought out against by sending letters to my local area um, councilman for the county and for the town and I sent letters to the Congress 
of my state and I sent information out about why I was fighting these things. So my big ones were the spraying of herbicide along our roadways in the rural area that I live in. Spraying herbicide is considered a um, pretty normal thing. I know how devastating it can be to the environment and the ecosystem that lives along those roadways. There are many native plants that support so many species of butterflies, bees, and other beneficial insects, as well as animals, and even humans. If they weren't spraying along the roadsides, we would be able to forage some of these wonderful medicines and foods. But our county believes that the cheapest, quickest, easiest way to do it is to spray herbicide, rather than getting a mowing crew to come through and cut the sides of the road to keep it visible. So I fought against that. I fought against that on a very small manner because I was traveling down the road one day in my vehicle and I was following along behind one of these herbicide trucks. And it irked me that they were just spraying all of these beautiful plants. There were, there were wildflowers blooming, they were spraying. The, I, all I could think was the poor bees and butterflies and beneficial pollinators that are going to come to those plants and be poisoned by this herbicide and when we got to a bridge going over a major waterway it wasn't a river but it was a very big creek they did not turn off their sprayer they continued spraying all the way across the bridge in the water and i know from personal experience with my volunteer roles with the environmental protection agency from years past where I was an adopter stream volunteer that you it is absolutely illegal to spray herbicides in waterways or even near waterways there is a, at least a 25 foot setback that they are supposed to obey as any pesticide handler license that you would have to obtain in order to be allowed to spray these pesticides you are supposed to be trained not to do it that way. So unfortunately, I got very upset. I pulled the guy over. I made him pull over in his big truck and my little car and I chewed him out and I asked who he worked for and everything and I, I went straight to who he worked for. He was, um, he was reamed by me and I hope that he was reamed by his boss and employers because it was a completely against the law. I then went to the county who had hired this company to do the spraying and I reamed them and taught them a whole bunch of lessons about proper pesticide application. I don't like that they spray the herbicide at all, but they better follow the environmental regulations set in place to protect our waterways and the creatures that live in it. So I fought for that. Another thing that I fought for in my time here in this town is there were mosquito trucks that were spraying in the main town area and they were spraying these mosquito trucks during times when they shouldn't have. It was during times where honeybees were still out. By law, they're supposed to wait until all honeybees have returned to their hives and are no longer active. They did not wait. They sprayed during daylight hours and they also did not warn any of the residents, which is another law they are supposed to follow. You have to notify all residents so that they can take their pets indoors and cover any of their pets' waters, dishes, or food dishes. They didn't do this. People had cats getting sick from drinking their water because it had been sprayed. This was out of control. I joined a group that was fighting for no spray in our town and we got it to the point where they finally stopped breaking the law. And I feel good about that. So if you have any local groups that you can join that are helping to protect your environment or protect your homesteading rights, please do so. And remember that you can always contact your county or city councilman and have a word with them directly. They have to answer your calls and your emails, and you will have a chance to speak to them. Go to town meetings, go to county city hall meetings, whatever you have in your area. Go to those meetings and speak up for what is right so that people 
coming after you so that your children, your grandchildren will have a better community to grow up in. But I hope that this has opened up some eyes and opened up some hearts to really help support the life on Beagle Road journey right now. They're going through some hard times. If you haven't checked out their channel, go check it out. Give them a subscribe if you like their videos, which I'm sure you will. They're really funny and good people. Um, and just, I want to thank Life Goes North for starting this collaboration. Go check out their channel and subscribe as well. And just keep in mind that you can make a difference. You can speak up. There's one thing that really stands out when people say, what did you learn from your parents or your father? And for me, from my father, it's speak the truth. And that's what I try to do every day and in any way that I can. So you can always speak the truth to fight when your government is not doing what's right and you know what's right in your heart. You can definitely find ways to help not just for yourself, but for others too. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.